So before I even begin, let me know your top three most used cameras in the comments below. And um, I, would, I would just love to see what you guys are using most often. And you'll get to see what I use most often in this video. So I'm excited that it was a nice sunny day off. Finally on my day off, I get sunshine. So I'm spending as much time outside here as possible. And I thought today I would share my top three cameras that I use most often. Not necessarily my favorite cameras, but my favorite to use. The ones I use the most. Is that the same? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, so I know that usually I... Okay, I only have videos about instant photography right now on my channel, but I actually use a wide range of cameras, all different types actually. So my top three that I use most right now are, well, this is not in any specific order. Well, I just got a text. iPhone 5C, because I'm cheap, and we, my dad bought it for me refurbished, and it's my own pay-as-you-go plan, so I don't have to pay for data because I'm cheap. So um, the camera on this isn't 100% perfect. I'm sure the newer ones on the new iPhone models are much better, but this one's great. I'll show some shots that I've taken with that recently. I've been editing with the A Color Story app, and I actually really like it because you get to use curves and stuff, but there's no masking feature, which I would love to see in that app. I should probably check out some other apps that do have a masking feature. So if you have any good photo editing, iPhone editing apps, um, just let me know in the comments. Their digital camera that I use mo most often is actually my Canon S90. I know you would probably think that it would be a DSLR. And I do use my DSLR uh, for shooting videos, for shooting all sorts of stuff. But this guy is freaking awesome. I think it came out in 2009. I bought it probably in 2012, used for like $100, whereas originally it was like $500. You can set in man, you can use the manual settings. It has an aperture and a shutter um, control settings on the ring here. And then it's got this cool little ring around the lens that you can uh, change the f-stop or whatever else you set it to. It's really awesome. It basically does the same its quality is good enough that I usually bring this with me when I'm doing anything touristy and stuff just because it's so small and it can just go around your neck or in your pocket. It's great for hiking and all sorts of stuff like that. And I, if I'm doing anything super awesome, then I'll shoot in raw so that I can edit a little bit differently. So my third most used camera is my Nikon FG with just a 50 mil lens on it. This SLR is the bomb, at least I think. It's it's actually the only, uh, no, it's not true. It's not the only Nikon SLR that I have, but my husband got it for me a few years ago for Christmas. And it's just, it's so light compared to a lot of other metal body SLRs out there. It was made in 1982, so it's on the later end. It's not too chunky. I'm actually doing a one minute manual on this right now. So I've done the shooting and now we have to work on the editing. But it's got, you know, all sorts of good controls at the top. It's really easy. The light meter is super easy to read. It's just great. It's, it's my reliable 35 mil that I bring with me all the time whenever we're doing anything exciting I bring my Nikon FG with me so these are my three favorite cameras and I'll definitely show some pictures that I've recently scanned um, from the Nikon FG I think next week my video is gonna be just me scanning stuff whatever my husband and I are going to Germany actually for three weeks at the end of April two weeks at the end of April and I'll probably record some videos ahead of time just so that there's some exciting stuff still going on here on the YouTube channel. So yeah, stay tuned and please subscribe and let me know your top three favorite cameras in the comments. Yo.